after a crazy T20 match last week, which you should definitely watch before you watch this match if you haven't yet. It's back to our league campaign. Today we are away at Spalding Cricket Club, a team which we beat twice last year, so hopefully we can repeat that and get a much needed victory. Before the match we were sitting comfortably in the mid table, but a couple of wins would get us going in the right direction. Personally it's been a tough start to the season form wise, so I was really looking to put on my first significant score of the year. With the sun shining and what looked like a decent batting pitch, it was time to get the day's cricket underway. Kingy, who has been on a roll with the toss, once again won it and we chose to bat. We knew that the first 10 overs were going to be tricky, but if we could get through those, we would have a good platform to set a really competitive total. So let's get the match underway. As always, a big thank you to the patrons of the channel. If you'd like to become one of the exclusive members to appear on this list, follow the link in the description or the card above. After losing PJ early, the next dismissal was a controversial one, with Matt Carter being given out for handling the ball. I'm sure there will be many different opinions on whether the dismissal should have stood, but this is how I see it. Firstly, the umpires, by the letter of the law, have made the correct decision by giving it out, because there is no doubt that Matt did handle the ball. The umpires then asked the Spalding team whether they wanted to uphold the appeal, which they did. And so we venture into the murky and hazardous conflict between the law and the spirits of the game. In my mind, there was little to no chance for the ball rolling back onto the stumps. And so, although technically out, if we take the spirit of the game into account, I feel the Spalding team should have withdrawn their appeal and Matt should have carried on with his innings. Ultimately, this type of dismissal always leaves a bitter taste in one's mouth. Again, this is my opinion, but I would love to hear what you guys think, so drop a comment below. Weird, weird dismissal there. An interesting one. Yeah. Going across, yeah, yeah. Is that middle, please? Wait. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 That one popped. That one's gone through. <laughs> one popping, one keeping through. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Wait, yes, run. You're gonna have to push. Go on. Stay there. What do you say in the couple of weeks back when they're going behind? You usually get in the runs, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both of us, so maybe yeah. we're both in the runs. Yeah. <laughs> Overstride into them a bit. This is a bit slower and a bit unfit mm. on there. But mm. hey ho, still time, let's yeah. get in and work hard. And I'd rather commit to it than be yeah. half hearted on the crease. Yeah. <sighs> Watch the ball. Yeah! 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 So unfortunately my poor run of form continues, not the best shot selection, trying to cut a ball that was far too straight. A frequent question on my channel is how to get out of poor form. This is a really challenging question with so many possible answers. However, a good place to start is trying to pinpoint the reason for your bad form. Is it a technical flaw? Are you preparing for matches appropriately? Are there stresses in your daily life that are affecting your mental state? Is it just a period of bad luck? Batting is such a mental battle and if your mind is not clear you will inevitably play incorrect shots. Personally, the last months have been stressful for a number of reasons, which has led me to feeling mentally tired, which is most likely the reason for my form. So for me, my plan is to fit in periods of rest so that my mind is as fresh as possible coming into matches. So my advice is to recognize the potential problems and put things in place to help give you the best chance of getting back into form.
You've obviously noticed that we really struggled, losing regular wickets and weren't able to put on any meaningful partnerships. The only positive was a nuggety rear guard from our tail enders, particularly Kez, who managed an excellent 28 not out. In the end, we scored 143, definitely not what we were looking for, but at least we had something to bowl at. And with Kingy and Carts, anything was still possible. Well done, Kez. Top innings, boy. Well done. 143, all out. Unfortunately, didn't uh, bat out our overs. Good little innings from Kez at the end. 28, not out. Little red anchor. Gonna have to do well to ball him out there. With two early wickets, we had a small window of opportunity to get a grip of the innings. But that was short-lived as good batting coupled with a flattening wicket meant that Spalding didn't really give us a sniff. In the end, both batsmen scored half centuries and knocked off our total comfortably, giving Spalding an eight-wicket victory. We could argue that perhaps one or two things went against us, but at the end of the day, an eight-wicket victory shows that we were outplayed on this occasion and Spalding deserved the credit for their excellent display. So back to the drawing board for us as we slip down the table into eighth position. Our batting displays have to improve if we are going to make a push up the table and things don't get easier as our next match is away to last year's champions born. Here's hoping for improved form and results in the near future. As always, thanks for all your support and we'll see you in the next match. Cheers.